Mr. President. Senator from Nevada. Mr. President, thank you, and I want to thank my colleagues on both sides of the aisle uh, on this particular piece of legislation. I, I know there's a lot of passion behind this, and there should be. And I do believe at the end of the day, end of the day uh, Mr. President, there will be an appropriate uh, authorization and spending level so that we can get this bill passed, something that I support. I also want to thank the uh, uh, the chairman, Chairman Grassley, uh, Ranking Member Leahy, and all those that have been involved in this particular topic of bringing, the, bringing opioid abuse to the forefront. Opioid abuse is an issue that every member of the Senate hears about when they go home. Uh, for many Nevadans, substance abuse is an issue that hits close. It's an issue I read about in constituents' letters, and far too many calls come in on this issue to my office. Like many of my colleagues, I've heard from those who are struggling with addiction or who have lost a loved one to this epidemic. In my home state, Nevada, there were 545 drug overdose deaths in 2014 alone. I've heard countless stories from young Nevadans who've experienced addiction themselves or seen their friends slip into this scary spiral of abuse. I recently met a young man from Reno who was advocating on behalf of multiple friends who he'd lost to heroin overdoses. He said it started off experimenting with leftover painkillers in his friend's parents' medicine cabinets. Eventually, the pills were gone. The group of friends started experimenting with harder and cheaper drugs, and some of their friends fell into the juvenile court system after being caught with illegal drugs. Unfortunately, the court system wasn't equipped to adequately treat their addiction, and they slipped back into their old habits. The young man from Reno has now had to go and has gone to multiple funerals. I'm glad that he had the courage to tell his friends stories. Opioid abuse and addiction has stolen the lives of far too many Nevadans, and it's time that we do something about it. I know my colleagues here he, hear the same stories in their offices, also on a daily basis. In 2014, opioids were involved in almost 30,000 American deaths. That means more Americans now die each year from drug overdoses than they, they do from car crashes. The unfortunate reality of opioid abuse has become a major public health concern and something needs to be done. We know this ep epidemic hits all ages, all socioeconomic levels, all races, and all genders. Opioid often starts with treating legitimate pain needs, but there are two groups of Nevadans that are extremely important. And I have focused my efforts today on these two very important populations, our veterans and our seniors. First, I have two amendments that improve access to treatment for our nation's veterans. My first amendment, Heller Amendment Number 3346, would include veteran service organizations in the Pain Management Best Practices Interagency Task Force. Giving VSOs a seat at the table on this task force will help us better understand the unique circumstances our nation's veterans face that drive them to use opioids in the first place. My second amendment, the Heller Amendment number 3351, would allow veteran nonprofit organizations to be eligible for grants from the Building Communities of Recovery Program. The Building Communities of Recovery Program is designed to pool community resources to help those affected by opioid abuse seek the proper treatment to recover from these highly addictive pain medications and avoid slipping into a cycle of chronic drug abuse. Including veterans nonprofit organizations in this grant program will allow places like Veterans Village in Las Vegas to access more resources to treat the servicemen and women in our state. As a member of the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee, I'm concerned about how opioid abuse impacts Americans' heroes. Some of these veterans are in severe pain due to injuries they sustained during service to our nation, and numerous veterans have reached out to my office for help when the VA's policies are negatively impacting them. As we debate the Comprehensive Addiction and Recovery Act, it is critical for Congress to ensure VSOs have a voice. These organizations understand the unique challenges veterans face with opioids and how to resolve these issues. And that's why I have filed two amendments to allow this important stakeholder to come to the table and help reduce opioid abuse. I encourage my colleagues to accept these amendments and would like to continue to work with the bill managers as we find a path forward on them. The senior population is another group of Nevadans that face unique circumstances on how they become dependent on opioids. 
They are prescribed opioids to cope with chronic pain and discomfort after surgery, and obviously rightfully so. In fact, about 40% of Nevada seniors are on some type of opioid. But opioids have qualified qualities that make them highly addictive and prone to abuse. Pain is a highly complex issue, and there are many barriers to pain management. Just recently, I had a constituent reach out to my office because they were being denied access to a life-saving opioid pain medication for the very rare, for a very rare and serious condition. Fortunately, we were able to help resolve the situation, but it was disappointing that this Nevadan had to go to such extremes to receive the treatment that they deserved. No doubt, Congress should pay, play a role in, address, in addressing opioid addiction and this epidemic, and I think there are ways to accomplish this goal while ensuring that seniors in Nevada and throughout the U.S. continue to receive the care that they need. One of those ways is to permanently repeal the Medicare caps on, on therapy services. Right now, current law places an annual per beneficiary payment limit of $1,880 for all outpatient therapy services. I firmly believe if patients had better access to physical therapy, they would not be as dependent on highly addictive pain medication. Seniors would also have a higher quality of life by treating the sources of the pain and rebuilding their strength. With proper access to care, seniors will be able to enjoy a happy and healthy retirement rather than cope with the pain through highly addictive medication that only masks their discomfort. Senator Cardin and I have been working on a responsible alternative to the Medicare's therapy cap. And I believe that more work needs to be done to ensure these proposals will solve the problem and assure that these seniors have access to the therapies and treatments they need. Right now, the cap has been lifted until March of 2017. We have, near, we have until early next year to come up with a permanent solution to the therapy cap issue, and I have no doubt that Senator Cardin and I will be able to deliver results for seniors across this country. The American people want us to put partisan politics aside, come up with solutions to the problems that we see every day. CARE is an example that Congress can and should come together to solve these problems. The epidemic of opioid abuse has reached a serious point in our debate. I believe the Comprehensive Addiction Recovery Act is a step in the right direction, and I encourage my colleagues to pass this important legislation, and I'm hopeful that we can do it this week, showing Nevadans and all Americans that we're serious about addressing this problem. Mr. President, I yield the floor.